For at TV, the world is thinking. If I were to ask our erudite audience here uh, when they'd imagine the word unemployment first appears in federal parlance. Now, we heard FDR talking about it in 1937 as if it was a, a commonly understood thing. But I'm sure all of you have an answer in your own heads. And you, you can feel free to stand up and beat your chest if the answer that you had in your head was 1887. Yeah, but that is the correct answer. And maybe, was, maybe you're just modest. You that know? was a really great interactive moment. Ed. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> they could have interacted. They just, you know, they yeah. just didn't happen well, to know maybe that. Maybe they were all thinking. What do they, we know? They were. Raise your hand if you were thinking. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Out there in Radio Land, hands shot up all over the Miller Center. Yeah. So now, just because the federal government used the word in 1887, Brian, doesn't mean that they invented the word. And in fact, right. it had been around a little while longer. Now, how we get from the land of right, right. Peter's simple history, where people are just farming well, and I subsisting, it. Yeah, no, it's all right, no, no. It. No, no, no. <laughs> to the wonderful swirl and, and rich variegation of the 19th century. <laughs> it's not that interesting. <laughs> I hope it is for the next two minutes at least, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, something has to happen. First, obviously, people have to leave the farms and start working for someone else. And so unemployment goes hand in hand with the birth, as you might have guessed, with employment of wage labor, of working for somebody else. And so it, this begins in the Northeast, where factories begin in Massachusetts. And when the, the idea of uh, bringing people in from the countryside, often young women, first of all, right. Younger people, first of all, who are not as useful as it's imagined on the farm, uh, they come and start working uh, in the factories. Or they're coming to the cities and working. Now, throughout the entire antebellum period, all the way up to the Civil War, you're having this process going on, but you're still not having the word unemployment. What, you, you have panics, subject of a previous backstory episode, uh, <laughs> and, and hard times and people sort of looking for work which is one reason we're, we've titled the show today, Looking for Work, since we didn't want Peter to have to sit here quietly for the entire show, since the word unemployment didn't exist. Or even uh, worse, go out and look for work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what you do have is, in 1857, there's a big depression. And down here in the South, where enslavement uh, prevents unemployment for four million people held in slavery, what you find is that uh, they look up north and they say, look at Chicago, look at New York. It's out of control. That what you have is all these people who are now literally short of food. They cannot feed their, their children because they are without work. Okay? They still don't have the word unemployment. Civil War comes the most dislocating thing in American history. And we tend to imagine it was somehow confined to four years. And when it was over, everybody sort of shook hands like, you know, Lee and Grant and went back. But they go back to massive dislocation. Obviously, the South is devastated. And suddenly, four million people are looking for work. Four million people who have been held in slavery have to find work. And so that's a major dislocation. It really takes a very long time to work out. But you don't, they never went through the widespread process of industrialization, but the land and the farms are devastated. So well, what's going to happen? Well, you could say, Ed, that, of course, plantations were a kind of industrial labor. And now the, and they all shut down. Right, and now right, they had to figure right. out how do we come back. But what really, the, the worst thing that happens, and this is when you start having hobos and tramps, that people, young men, are dislocated by the war, and they disconnected from their families, a lot abandoned families, and set out looking for things. They start living on these new railroads that are spreading everywhere. And the first great crisis of employment that we see in this country is in the, de the Depression of the 1870s, which was the most dislocating thing Americans had ever seen, certainly in peacetime. And throughout the 1870s, unemployment is, is near the rates that we would have today. It dips down a little bit for the 1880s, and then the 1890s comes back. And if you can imagine the unemployment we have right now, which is, I know you'll tell us about it, how it fits into context, for a decade, the unemployment that we're living with right now, year after year after year in the 1890s. And it's the midst of that, 1887, that they're trying to measure 
how much unemployment there is. Now, they don't know what they can do about it since they don't really have the, the, the social safety net to put in <laughs> place, but they figure at least we have to know what are we talking about here? Is the whole society unhinged? Yeah. And so what we think of, I think, is the modern concept of unemployment, which is, and this definition is, you have to be out of a job and you have to be actively looking for one and you have to have been actively looking for one four to six weeks. And